Tony Ferguson is one of the greatest fighters in lightweight history. The Mexican-American fighter found success early by winning the 13th season of The Ultimate Fighter. And after this, he went on a legendary run which saw him win 12 fights in a row. And in the process, not only did he become the UFC interim lightweight champion, but he also became a huge fan favorite due to his style of fighting and eccentric personality. Many were rooting for him to become the undisputed lightweight champion. But he never even got a shot at that title and now at the age of 37, he is on a 3 fight losing streak. So how good was Tony Ferguson? Ferguson actually. Hey guys, it's Keon and today I'm going to be talking about Tony El Kakui Ferguson. I know what you're probably thinking, this video may be way too early to make. After all, Tony hasn't retired and has still expressed interest in continuing to fight. But I wanted to make this video now because I already see people forgetting how legendary this man is. Especially with the recent narrative that Khabib Nurmagomedov would have won had they fought. And people believe this based on Tony's past 3 defeats. But at his peak, I truly believe he would have been Khabib's toughest test. Because at this time, he wasn't only one of the best at 155, but he was also one of the best fighters in the world. So in this video, we're going to take a look at his MMA career to really understand how good he was. But first, shout out to the undisputed members of my Patreon. They get the extra perk of a shout out before each video. But even the intro members get early access and video to the Keon Kamara podcast. And as always, the money goes to charity. Now let's get to it. Tony began his MMA career on April 12, 2008 at the age of 24. Prior to his debut, he had a successful collegiate wrestling career. After winning his first three MMA fights, Tony fought Frank Park. The two traded bombs early on, but Tony's takedowns were the difference. On the second one, he locked up a neck crank that ended the fight. After this, Tony went 2-1 in his next three fights before fighting James Fanchier. This was a wild fight both on the feet and on the ground. But for the most part, Tony was controlling the action, especially with his grappling. By the end, he won by unanimous decision. Three months later, Tony fought Jamie Tony. After getting taken down, Tony reversed the position but got locked up in a triangle choke that put him to sleep. Following this defeat, he picked up a win before fighting David Gardner. The grappling was competitive, but on the feed, it was all Tony. He eventually finished David in the second with a knee and punches that forced referee Herb Dean to step in. Tony went on to win the Pure Combat Welterweight Championship before competing on the 13th season of The Ultimate Fighter. His coach was former UFC heavyweight champion, Brock Lesnar. And Tony had so many memorable moments on the show, both inside and outside of the cage. In the preliminary round, he fought Justin Edwards. Despite a strong start from Justin on the feed, and on the ground, Tony connected with a heel kick that put him out. And after these wins, Tony defeated both Ryan McGilvery and Chuck O'Neill by TKO, thus earning him a spot in the finale. His opponent was Ramsey Nijum. And for this fight, Brock invited Tony to train with him at his gym, something which Tony would later say was huge for his growth as a fighter. And it paid off against Ramsey as Tony knocked him out in round one with a huge left hand, making him the Ultimate Fighter 13 welterweight tournament winner. At UFC 135, Tony went down to lightweight and fought Aaron Riley. And after Tony could connected with some punches in round 1, the fight was stopped before the second due to Aaron's broken jaw. Three months later, Tony fought Eves Edwards. Although Eves connected with some hard shots, he ate some big ones as well. And with Tony's constant pace, he was the aggressor on the feet for most of the fight. By the end, he won by unanimous decision. After this win, he fought Michael Johnson. Although Tony had some moments in this fight, Michael was able to avoid most of his offense and connect more on the feet, especially with the left hand and light kicks. After three rounds, he won by unanimous decision. At UFC 166, Tony fought Michael Rio. After eating a big left hand, Mike shot for a desperation takedown. This led to a Darce choke by Tony which forced the tap. Seven months later, he fought former deep lightweight champion, Katsunori Kikuno. Tony dominated with his striking which led to a right hand that finished the fight. At UFC 177, he fought Danny Castillo. Tony was the aggressor on the feed as he was constantly pressing forward. He also attempted many submissions. But Danny also had some moments on the feed and did well in maintaining top control. Regardless, Tony won the fight by split decision. Following this victory, he fought Abel Trujillo. Tony faced early adversity as he ate some big shots on the feet and on the ground. But Abel gassed out by the second and after eating a body kick, Tony brought the fight down and locked up a rear naked choke that forced a tap. At UFC 184, Tony fought Glayson Tebow. Glayson got rocked by a right hand which led to a desperation takedown. This gave Tony the opportunity to lock up a rear naked choke that forced a tap. Five months later, he fought former Strikeforce lightweight champion, Josh Thompson. Josh tried to bring the fight down but was having a hard time. Even when the action made its way to the ground, Tony was attempting submissions. And while on the feet, he battered Josh with his striking and even dropped him a few times. This dominant performance gave Tony the unanimous decision. After this win, he was supposed to fight Khabib Nurmagomedov, but Khabib pulled out due to injury so instead, Tony fought Edson Barbosa. This was an action-packed fight both on the feet and on the ground, especially when both men were standing in front of each other and trading punches and kicks. And even though he was eating many shots, Tony continued to press forward. And in round 2, Edson was unable to take any more and this forced him to 
to shoot for a desperation takedown. This led to a Darce choke from Tony that forced the tap. After this win, he was expected to fight Michael Johnson in a rematch, but Michael pulled out due to injury. Then for a second time, Tony vs Khabib Nurmagomedov was scheduled, but Tony pulled out due to lung issues. This led to a match with Michael Chiesa, but Michael pulled out due to injury. Tony did not want to wait around, so instead he fought promotional newcomer, Lando Venata. And to the surprise of many, the fight was very competitive. Tony had his moments on the feet, but so did Lando and at the end of round 1, he was very close to finishing the fight. And this back and forth action continued into round 2 before Tony locked up a Dars choke that finished the fight. Following this 8 fight win streak, Tony headlined his first UFC fight card. The bout took place in Mexico City and his opponent was former UFC lightweight champion, Rafael Dos Anjos. At the start of the fight, Rafael was the aggressor on the feet by pressing forward and connecting with some nice shots. But Tony countered with some of his own and as the fight went on, he was the fresher fighter. This led to him pressing forward more and Rafael was not only eating his strikes, but he was also slowing down. And credit to him for still returning fire, but the former champ was unable to keep up with Tony's constant pace. By the end, Tony won by unanimous decision. At UFC 209, he was scheduled to fight Khabib Nurmagomedov for the interim lightweight championship. A belt that was created due to champion Conor McGregor being inactive from MMA due to boxing. But Khabib pulled out due to weight cutting issues and for a third time, the fight was cancelled. So Tony fought for the interim lightweight championship at UFC 216. His opponent was Kevin Lee. Kevin started off strong both on the feet and on the ground. But Tony was able to survive and keep it competitive with strikes of his own. And after getting taken down in round 3, he locked up a triangle choke that forced Kevin to tap, making Tony the UFC interim lightweight champion. Tony was expected to unify this belt in a fight against Khabib Nurmagomedov at UFC 223. But for a fourth time, the fight was cancelled and this time it was due to an injury that Tony sustained by tripping on a wire during media obligations. This injury and layoff had the UFC strip him of his interim championship. So after a year on the sidelines, he came back and fought former UFC lightweight champion Anthony Pettis. This was a fun fight that saw both men connect on the feet. And although Tony was pressing forward more and throwing at a high rate, Anthony dropped him at one point and the fight looked really close to ending. But Tony survived and continued to batter him on the feet. And going into round 3, Anthony suffered a broken hand and this forced his corner to stop the fight. At UFC 238, Tony fought Donald Cerrone. This was another striking war. And although Tony ate some big shots, he was able to return some as well and overall, he was controlling the pace of the fight. Going into round 3, Donald's eye completely shut after he blew his nose. This forced the doctor to stop the fight. At UFC 249, Tony was expected to fight for the belt against champion Khabib Nurmagomedov. Before a fifth time, the fight got cancelled. And this time, it was due to the beginning of the coronavirus pandemic. And with Russia restricting air travel, Khabib was unable to fight at the event. But Tony was still down to compete. So instead, he fought for the interim lightweight championship against former World Series of Fighting lightweight champion, Justin Gaethje. These two went toe-to-toe -to -toe for the entire fight. And although Tony had some moments, he was also eating many punches and kicks. Justin's striking was very sharp and for the most part, he was avoiding the returning fire. Tony was battered and although he displayed a lot of heart in this fight, it became too much in round 5 and after eating a stiff jab, he began shaking his head and this forced Herb Dean to step in. Tony came back 7 months later and fought Charles Oliveira. Charles was controlling the action both on the feet and on the ground. Before the end of round 1, he locked up a really tight armbar, but Tony displayed his toughness and didn't tap. Regardless, he got dominated and by the end, Charles won by unanimous decision. At UFC 262, Tony fought Benil Dariush, and although Benil was finding more success on the feet, it was on the ground where he was controlling the action. Once again, Tony displayed how tough he was by not tapping to a really tight heel hook, but in the end, Benil won by unanimous decision. This was Tony's most recent fight, and now 37 and having lost 3 in a row, many believe that his time at the top has come to an end. But even if that's the case, there is no doubt that his legacy has been cemented. And if he does decide to fight after this, I hope he knows that there are many people, including myself, that will still be rooting for him. So after going 25-6 and six in a career that saw him become the UFC interim lightweight champion, the Ultimate Fighter 13 welterweight tournament winner, and the Pure Combat welterweight champion, how good was Tony Ferguson actually? He is easily in the top 5 of greatest lightweights in MMA history. Even though he never captured the undisputed championship, the interim one that he won held way more value. I've said before that Henry and Barrao was the greatest interim champion of all time. But now I'm going to give that title to Tony, because he had the most difficult path to that belt as he had to win 10 fights in a row in one of the toughest divisions in MMA history. And he did this in exciting fashion. He had a very unorthodox style of fighting both on the feet and on the ground. And the way he would transition seamlessly between the two was a huge reason for this. He would throw an array of punches, kicks, knees, and elbows. And because he had a strong chin, he wasn't afraid to take shots in order to return some as well. He also had some solid wrestling and that was 
displayed more early on in his career. But later on, he would roll into his opponent's leg and try to bring them down that way. In fact, Tony would roll a lot, whether it was to bring the fight down, deny a takedown, or escape when he got hurt on the feet. But on the ground, he was very skilled as he was always a threat with submissions. My favorite submission of his would be the darts choke, and he was so good at locking it up due to his long reach. And the pace that he would fight at both on the feet and on the ground really showed how amazing his cardio was. Even if he got rocked, he was able to recover and still maintain this pace. So of course, this not only led to some amazing fights, but many of his opponents would be physically destroyed by the end. In other words, they were a bloody mess. Because even if they were tough, Tony was tougher. And that toughness till this day is one of his most impressive traits. But I would also say that it was a detriment to his career. Like I said, he wasn't afraid to get hit, and although that worked for a while, it was bound to catch up with him. And that's what we saw in his fight against Justin Gaethje, as he took an absurd amount of damage in that fight. And as a result, he didn't seem to be the same fighter anymore. His toughness in general led to many injuries. Even though it wasn't an injury that he sustained in the cage, the trip over the wire before the Khabib fight is when I believe things really changed. It caused him to tear his fibular collateral ligament, and as a result, he not only took a lot of time off, but it also impacted his mobility. Plus, he was dealing with a lot of issues in his personal life. And even though he defeated Anthony Pettis and Donald Cerrone afterwards, he still faced a lot of adversity in those fights. This is when I personally thought he didn't look to be in prime form anymore. And as he got older, his style of fighting wasn't the same as it heavily relies on speed and explosiveness. On top of all of this, Tony took fights that he really didn't have to take. Edson Barbosa, Lando Venata, and Justin Gaethje were all short notice fights, and he took some significant damage in each of them. And all of those fights happened after Khabib Nurmagomedov pulled out. We can only imagine what would have happened had Tony waited for that fight instead of putting his body through more wear and tear. Because between 2015 and 2017, he was in his absolute prime, and in my opinion, he would have been Khabib's toughest opponent. Styles make matchups and Tony's was one that would have been very interesting to see against Khabib. Regardless, Tony taking these fights on short notice was a huge reason why people loved him. He was down to fight anytime and anywhere, and that mindset alone was respected by many MMA fans. And because of it, he became one of the greatest memes in the history of the sport. That's why I would give his MMA career a 9 out of 10. His career is the best example of how unforgiving the sport can be. The UFC screwed him big time as he never got a shot at the undisputed championship due to their attention being focused on Conor McGregor. And nowadays, many people are remembering him for his recent defeats instead of his 12 fight win streak. But I wanted to make this video to remind everyone how lucky we were to witness this man fight in MMA. Because even though he never even fought for the undisputed belt, Tony Ferguson was still a champion in the eyes of many people. My name is Keon, and this is my take on Tony El Kakui Ferguson. Do you agree, disagree, or have something else to add? Please put in the comments down below, because I love to read it. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. But that's all for now, so I'll see you on my next one.